to our first Meet the Partner series uh, for our newest partner appointments in Perth. My name is Katie Timms. I'm a partner in our business advisory division. And I'd like to introduce you to Jerome Mullen, who is the new partner in our restructuring and recovery division. Welcome, Jerome. Thanks, Katie. Now, restructuring and recovery used to be known as insolvency, and it's been rebranded a little bit. Can you explain to us how did you end up in this role? So I started at RSM 11 years ago as a graduate. Um, happy to say I wasn't a great university student by, by any means. I didn't turn any of the rotation intakes and all the things that probably should do, but um, I was heavily involved in sport and did a lot of um, football umpiring, played cricket, um, and I actually got introduced to RSM through one of my former coaches, um, who introduced me to Greg Dudley, who's um, still one of my partners, um, which is fantastic. Um, and yeah, from there he offered me a, a job and and insolvency or restructuring and recovery, probably not a field that a lot of people would, you know, initially choose to get into. It can be quite challenging. But is that a misconception? Is it actually a really fun job? It's a fun job. We, we deal with a, a very wide range of um, sort of people and scenarios. So going back to when I was a student, I, um, I knew I always didn't want to just sort of be doing standard sort of compliance. I wanted to deal with people because I felt that's where my, my strengths were. So... Um, I was always looking at somewhere in consulting or people management and um, insolvency, restructuring, and recovery sort of gave that opportunity. So I did apply for a number of roles in that field and ended up at RSM. Um, I think it is, there are a lot of misconceptions about insolvency out there in the market. Um, uh, John Colburn, one of our partners in Canberra, did a wonderful um, segment recently. People can watch it on, on what are your options. And one of the things that really stood out for me is the question. I think when people ask us for help, they're very surprised by the answers that they get and the options that are available to them. And so, again, with our field, it's just like anything, make sure you get educated and you ask the right questions and get the expert advice because um, there are a lot of um, very good things that we can do as an industry. So it's not always a negative role that you know, you're involved in. You can actually positively help clients as well. Correct. So that there are a number of elements to that as well. So we, we deal with the back end of, of companies when they are in severe financial distress. So there are a lot of hard issues that come with that. Um, but by dealing with the hard issues for our RSM clients, we can bulletproof them at the front end of their business life through our learnings at the back end. Um, but I think also really importantly for the, the clients that I deal with on a day to day, I very much appreciate that they're going through something which will be one of the hardest things that they go through in their life, especially in the SME space. Um, your big corporate, which we also deal with, um, is, again, quite different. Um, it's one of the things I really enjoy about RSM is that we have a very broad range of what we do. We do the butcher, baker, candlestick maker sort of thing, um, but I've also traded ASX um, mines. So, so we've got a very wide range of what we do um, in the SME space. Definitely when we do see business failure or financial distress, it's extremely hard for those people and so there's a, um, it's really important that we have my staff and I do empathise with those people and what they're going through um, and provide that empathy, provide them with very clear and concise communication and advice around what they can and can't do. I also think is really important because there's, there's a vast ocean out there of advice and bits of information on the internet that people can look at so it's important when in those severe distress scenarios that they get um, very clear, articulate advice, which we're able to do. So a lot of your job really is about dealing with people and you clearly have good human skills. Where did that come from? Was that a natural thing or is that something you've really had to mould and learn over time? I'm a naturally very nervous and anxious person, like I think most really? people probably are. Um, I think a lot of it was built um, just through your, your general going through school, then you uni doing all those things. The big thing in my life that probably helped me most with people interaction, um, I played football for the vast of my life through um, junior sport all the way through the waffle competition. Um, and that really gave me a strong skill set in being able to manage expectations very fast, especially on the football field. You, you had a very minute um, second in time to be able to tell someone why you've made a decision, how it's going to affect them, and then sort of be able to move on very quickly from that. Um, and that correlates a lot to what we're doing in, in the insolvency industry, especially around we have to be an independent adjudicator of a lot of things that happen extremely fast. Um, so, yeah, that's sort of a bit, bit of having Okay, track. and you're still doing sport umpiring. Do you still find the time to balance, you know, partner responsibilities, young family, 
plus, you know, that passion as well outside? No. So we're doing a lot of things at RXM around well-being and health, and I look at myself and definitely an area that I need to improve. I finished umpiring a few years ago. Um, it sort of had run its natural life. Um, I really enjoyed my time there, but I was looking to develop further at RSM. I was um, getting married, starting a family, and I wanted to put my time there. Kept pulling hamstrings, which wasn't... Yeah, that happens as you get older. Wasn't wasn't the greatest thing, but, um, yeah, mainly wanted to focus in on work and um, actually went back and played social cricket for a few years because I wanted to take a step back from that semi-professional sort of environment, which was very all-consuming um, and really throw myself into work, into family, um, and then for a bit of sort of sporting relief when I played some sort of Z-grade cricket, which was Hamstrings. extremely enjoyable. Okay, Z-grade cricket, they... they nah, played. within a few weeks, I did one, yeah. and yeah, by, by the end of the first season, I think it was held together by rock tape, essentially, <laughs> but it was great fun. Yeah. yeah. And so what would you recommend to people who are looking at the r and industry? Like, what's the one key thing you think they need to know that they maybe don't know? Um, I think come in with an open mind. Um, I don't think there's a specific type of person that fits R and R well, um, nor there's a spe- specific type of person that's good at tact or at order. We're all very different people. We um, do a lot of work within our firm around accepting all different types of people. So I don't think people need to sort of think that they need to change or that they would be suited to a certain role until they've tried it. Um, but it's a very dynamic um, sort of industry that we deal with so every job if we're trading it is going to have a different set of issues to the previous job that we've dealt with so sort of on the, on the wide range if, you, if you're trading an ASX listed company versus trying to sort of help your mum and dad corner coffee store and on how to fix their financial troubles it's going to be a very different sort of range of advice that you can give a different range of people skills that you're going to need to be able to deal with your your corporate directors versus your mum and dad's that, put their life savings into a business. So it's just having an awareness of, of, of those sort of issues and, and how to deal with those different people and, and keeping an open mind to all those things. All right. Well, look, I hope some everyone feels a little bit better about meeting Jerome. I've certainly learned more about his hamstrings today than I knew about before. So thanks, Jerome. Thanks, Katie.